Hello, Anuradha. Can you not see the slides? Yes, sir. Your slide is visible. Very good afternoon, sir. Okay, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
So what is happening? We are trying to collect the data and based on that, we are trying to find out a model and then we are trying to do the forecasting using the model. That is why this is called as multiple linear regression analysis or simply a regression analysis. And uh, yeah, in uh, this regression analysis is uh, not a two hours topic, but it is a uh, means uh, one semester course at our place, but still I will try my best to give you here a fair idea in the next one and a half hours. Right, so let me try to take a very simple example to explain you that how we can actually uh, so try to so how uh, we can actually uh, uh, understand this uh, this uh, this regression analysis you know as a teacher many times students comes to us and they ask us okay how are they going to score in in their examination and they feel that okay as if uh, as a teacher we are going to give them the marks but the fact is this they earn the marks Right, and as a teacher, we know that these marks are going to depend on number of hours per week. They study number of assignments. They 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 submit every month or number of hours they play every week and so on. So now, whenever a student comes, that okay, how many marks I am going to get? You simply ask. Okay, how many hours you have? You are studying. How many assignments you have? have submitted how many hours do you play and based on that you try to forecast okay with this you will get only 40 percent of marks but if you study more then uh, you will get 70 percent marks and so on so if you try to see what are you trying to do as soon as you collected the data from the students you you created a model inside your brain and using that model you forecasted that that how many marks the student is expected to get right so now we try to do the same thing here in this lecture also. Suppose we want to find out this relationship between the marks of a student and the number of rows, sorry, number of hours per week of a study, number of assignments submitted per month, and the numbers of play every week. Right, and we want to formulate this in a form of a mathematical equation. So what we try to do, we try to collect the data on say these 20 students. So we have a student number one, we ask them that, uh, and, and then I try to create, take a three variables, say excellent number of hours per week, number of assignments per month, and the number of hours of play. And we call the first student, we ask the data that how many number, how many hours you have studied, how many assignments you have submitted, and how many hours you have played. And then we try to ask that how many marks you have you have obtained out of 250, that is 180. And this and this process we try to repeat for this 20 student. Okay, I am taking 20 students because I have a space on my slide, slide only for the 20 students. And then my objective is this, uh, that I want to find out a mathematical relationship between the marks obtained with respect to the number of assignments submitted per week, number of hours of study, and the number of hours of play. That, uh, that how many hours they have actually played. Right. So this is, uh, is our basic objective now. So now how we can do it? Okay, tell me one thing in this uh, example, I'm going to denote Y as the marks of students, X1, X2, X3 as the number of hours per week of study, number of assignment submitted uh, per month and the number of hours of play in every week. Right, so we essentially we want to find out a relationship between Y uh, with respect to X1, X2 and X3. So that is going to be a joint relationship of X1, X2, X3 with respect to Y. So Y is going to be the outcome and X1, X2, X3, they are the, they are the input uh, variables, right? So now if you try to see, we have here two types of variable. One which are independent like X1, X2, X3, which are in your control to which you, you can give the data, you can give the input values and then there is here Y, which is the output variable, right? So now when we uh, are trying to consider a multiple linear regression model, that means we are trying to consider more than one independent variable. Independent variables uh, means uh, uh, you can assign the values to them yourself. And then we want to find out a relationship between the, the, the output variable and more than one independent variables. 
when when you have only one random uh, only one independent variable then the model is usually called as simple linear regression model and when you are tr trying to consider more than one variable then it is called as multiple linear regression model that is the very simple uh, say difference between the two right and uh, then actually in a regression analysis what you have to assume that when we are trying to find out a relationship between the output variable and uh, the the input variables usually we are trying to find out the average relationship that how the average value of the um, uh, dependent uh, function which we try to denote as has expected value y but this means here mean value of y this depends on these explanatory variables or independent variables. Now, this uh, relationship can be a uh, linear or can be a non-linear, but here we are trying to consider only the linear relationship, right? So now you know what is uh, that? How to denote a how to de denote a linear relationship? So if you try to see here, you all have done this equation: y is equal to mx plus here c well i'm trying to write with my mouse so that i'm slow and it will it will not be very good so in this case what happened this is a, a straight line so where uh, y is the uh, y is the data x is the data and m is the slope parameter and c is the intercept term so c is going to indicate that when x takes value y what is the value of uh, y and m is that uh, the slope of the line line on the x-axis right so now if you try to see here suppose i give you here two options that i give you the value of here x and y as say x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 and second alternative is that i try to give you here the value of here m and c Right. So now, in in which of the case you would like to, you will know the entire equation. Right. When you know the values of x, y, that means this relationship is going to be like as here, say, two is equal to three m plus c. You don't know anything out of that. But if you know the value of m and c is like as here, m equal to two and c equal to three, then your then your line is equal to here, y is equal to x plus three. So in that case, you know each and everything. That when x is equal to zero, then what is the value of y? For any given value of x, what is the value of y? Where the line is intersecting uh, on the x-axis, y-axis, etc., etc., and and what is the slope? So everything is going to be known to you. So if you try to see here, out of these two sets of values, x, y, and m, c, if you, if you know the value of m and c, then you know the entire line. So these are called the parameters of the model. In statistics, and then yeah, and then x and y, they are called they called as uh, the variables. So now. One thing we have understood that if you know the value of the parameters m and c, then you know the entire line. But whereas if you know the value of only x and y, you don't know the uh, uh, the entire information about the line, right? So now uh, this is giving us an idea that we have when we have only one variable, then I can write down here mx plus c. Suppose you have here more than one variable like x1, x2, xk. Then if you try to think that this equation can be written as say y is equal to m1, x1 plus m2, x2 plus mk, xk plus c. So in statistics, we have a tradition that we try to denote the, the variables as say Latin letters like as x, y, and we try to denote the parameters by the Greek letters like alpha, beta, gamma, etc. So I can re rewrite this model here as say here y is equal to say alpha plus beta x. So alpha is equivalent to like as here c and beta here is like as here m. Right. So now if you try to extend this relationship when you have more than one axis, 
then this is going to be y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta k xk. Okay. And then you can take it as a linear model or multiple linear regression model. If we will call it a regression model because as I explained to you what is the methodology of regression analysis that we try to collect the data on the independent and dependent variables and then we try to find out the, uh, the model. Now if you try to see finding what is the meaning of finding the model. If I say if my model is y equal to mx plus c then uh, if you try to find out the values of m and c that means the entire model is known to us. So when you are trying to discuss about uh, finding out a model that is, that is equivalent to say that we want to find out the values of the parameters of the model based on the data set. So we are trying to collect the data on say x and y, x1, x2, xk and y and then we are trying to find out the values of m and c and now if you try to extend it in a, in this case as we have written that uh, the uh, model then we want to find out the values of the parameters like as here beta 1, beta 2, beta k. So you can see here one thing you have to observe here, here I am taking here air, means air alpha but here in this model I have not taken here any alpha but there is only here beta 1, beta 2, beta k but if you try to see if you try to take x1 is equal to 1 for all the values then it is going to be beta 1 plus x2 beta 2 then beta 1 is equivalent to your here uh, uh, this uh, uh, interceptum alpha right so this is how we try to write down here the model here is a y equal to x1 beta 1 plus x2 beta 2 plus xk beta k now there comes comes another thing means if i ask you that how much time do you take from going from your home to your college you are going there for the last couple of years so you can say okay this is 30 minutes but do you really take only 30 minutes every day that is going to be sometime 25 minutes sometime 35 minutes sometime 28 minutes so there is some difference between the actual value and the observed value and this difference is purely random that you can't control you cannot uh, tell me with the 100% accuracy that the time at which that how much time exactly you are going to take when you are going to reach to your office. Right. So now the thing is this uh, that how to take care of this thing that the difference between the, the value that you are observing and uh, the value which you are which you are uh, thinking. So if you try to see whenever you are trying to process or, or you are trying to model a process then there are some variables which are known to us and their effects are known to us but there are many variables which are unknown to us and it is not possible to take the correct observations on them for example if i take very simple example that uh, what is the temperature in my room one can say okay it is 20, uh, 25 degrees but if you go to uh, to to the different parts of the room do you think that the temperature is exactly 25 at some place uh, places near the air conditioner the temperature will be less near my computer that temperature will be more yeah the difference is not going to be very high this may be 25.1 or 25 degrees centigrade only but at least they are not the same the difference is there Similarly, when you are trying to model something, there are many variables which cannot be entertained. You just cannot obtain the correct data on that. You cannot include such variables in the model. And there can be various random factors which are going to contribute in the data set. So even if I say if you try to go from your home to your college, say five times, every time you will take up a different time. And if I ask you that why this is happening, 
you can you can you can always say that okay you are uh, going to get some traffic something happened etc etc but the reason and the time of delay is not known unless and until you reach to your college or in simple words unless and until you concluded your experiment so all the effect of such random factors which you cannot control this is contained in this uh, factor here epsilon which is called here as a random errors right and in this with this uh, random errors uh, uh, and then you try to assume that it, all this x1 x2 xk and beta k they are the fixed value so this part becomes here fixed part so now this y here is this which is depending on the random factor so that is why y becomes a random factor so and that is really indicating what is really happening in the real life also for example if you try to see uh means uh, that if i ask you how much time are you really going to uh, reach from your office to your home so sometimes there is a delay of uh, say two minutes sometimes five minutes etc etc which is not in your hand so every observation will have a value of epsilon which is going to indicate the the amount of random error component and this, this is how you can make this uh, make this model more realistic you can say that okay this is a mathematical equation but it is going to indicate the uh, the real life phenomena in a better way right so uh, so that is the thing here so in this model actually this is called as multiple linear regression model the beta 1 beta 2 beta k they are called as regression coefficient actually this is an extension of your slope parameter so in the y equal to mx plus c the slope parameter was m so now you are trying to extend it to m1 m2 mk mk or which is equivalently here beta 1 beta 2 beta k so if you try to uh, see here this beta 1 beta 2 beta k which i call as regression coefficient they are the regression coefficient associated with this x1 x2 xk right so and epsilon is the random error component which is reflecting the difference between the observed and the fitted linear relationship fitted means after doing some statistical computation you can find out the value of this beta 1 beta 2 beta k and then those are going to be some some numerical values and then and then your model is going to be known to you so so that is how we, we try to interpret it now the question comes here what is the meaning of this here uh, this here beta j what it interprets so if you try to see here in this model beta j is occurring here somewhere with the coefficient uh, as a coefficient with the variable xj so if you try to take okay uh, if you try to see we can make one assumption here that when you say you reach from your office to home in say 25 minutes so sometimes you are reaching in 27 minutes and sometimes you are reaching in 23 minutes so if you try to repeat the experiment for a long time so so every observation will have some random error but but at the end of the day uh, if you try to take the sum of all those uh, random errors that is going to be close to zero because some some random errors are positive and some random errors are negative so uh, so if you assume that uh, that expected value of epsilon is zero that expected value means the mean value so that the mean value of the random error component in the population population means the entire population but you are trying to collect the data only on the sample so you are trying to say that if you try to collect all the observation then if you try to take the sum of all the random errors that is going to be zero that is not a, a reasonable assumption that some errors are going to be positive some errors are, are going to going to be going to be negative and then their average is going to be very close to zero or exactly zero so this uh, this expected value of y which is actually indicating the mean value of y so if you try to see here beta j is the partial derivative of the expected value of y with respect to xj if you try to interpret it in, what is this expected value y is the average value of y and then partial derivative of it with respect to xj is indicating the rate of change in the in the average value of y with respect to xj that means if that that how the average value of y is going to change when there is a unit change in the uh, value of the corresponding jth variable xj right 
So this is how we try to interpret it. So if you try to see here, if you want to obtain a model, what you have to do? You need to uh, you need to conduct the experiment for say for some some number of times. Suppose we suppose I assume that okay, you are going to conduct the experiment say a number of times or say 20 times. So mean so you try to conduct the experiment by giving different values to your independent uh, variable. For example, if I say, uh, suppose I want to conduct an experiment in inside a field where I am going to obtain the observation on the yield of a crop. So yield of the crop depends on several factors like as quantity of fertilizer, quantity of uh, say this rain, temperature, etc., etc. So all this x1, x2, xk, they are going to control uh, the the. They are going to indicate the values of the independent variable. So suppose I try to take 20 centimeter of irrigation, 5 kg of fertilizer, and say 30 degrees centigrade of temperature, and then we try to conduct the experiment and see what observations are we going to obtain. Uh, yeah, just hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just hold up. Uh, just hold up one minute. Uh, Vishant, you can talk to. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, there is some crisis in my office, so that is why this is happening. So, so so anyway, so we try to um, try to collect these observations by giving different values to this independent uh, variables. Like as I will give say 30 degree of temperature, 20 degree of say, irrigation, 5 kg of fertilizer, etc. And then we try to obtain the outcome here as say y1. And then similarly, we try to collect the uh, collect the observations by repeating the experiment. And then we try to collect here this observation y1, y2, yn, and so on. So now this is my hair model. So now we, you have to understand how we are going to interpret it. So now if you try to recall this experiment, so I try to take a student who has got, uh, the, who has studied 34 hours, who has submitted three assignment, and he has played for 15 hours, and the person has got 180. So now it is something like this here. I'm taking it x1, x2, x3. <laughs> And these are the observations which are uh, like 34, 3, and 15. And this is this y1 is the observation like as here, say, say here 180. Right. So, so you try to conduct this experiment 20 times, and then you have here 20 such values. Right. So now, if you try to see, if you uh, means it, try to write down here. 20 such equations using this framework alley, then I can compress them in the form of a vectors and matrices. I believe that you you all are familiar that if we have uh, two equations to, and then say uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to z and say say 5y minus 4x is equal to twice of z, then how you can express them in the form of a vectors and matrices. So what I'm trying to do here that I try to write down all these values here, which are here in this column here, like this one here is a vector matrix, uh, uh, the vector of the matrix theory like this. And then I try to take here all these values of here, X1, X2, X3 here like this one. And I try to create here, a, create here another matrix here X. Right, so now I have got here the two matrix here y and x. So now if you try to see, I can do here one thing. I can just explain you what I said. That suppose you are trying to conduct the experiment n times. So, so every equation is going to satisfy this set of equation. So now you can combine them in the uh, in the form of a vectors and matrices. So I can call this y1, y2, yn vector as here as a y. This matrix here like as here x. And then this is a beta as beta 1, beta 2, beta k vector here as a beta. And then all the, this random adder vector epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon as epsilon. So you can see here all this uh, equation and this all these observations can be written in the format of y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where y is the n cross one vector of observations on the response variable. X is going to be n cross k matrix of the observations on the k independent variable, and every variable has uh, is taking n number of values. Beta 1, beta 2, beta k, this is going to be a 
k cross 1 vector of the regression coefficient and epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon is the n cross 1 vector of the random error components, right? So this is how we try to set up our this multiple linear regression model. Right, so now our job is very simple. I need to know this for the values of this parameter vector beta. Knowing the value of beta is equivalent to knowing the value of beta 1, knowing the value of beta 2 up to knowing the value of beta k. So, and then, yeah, means if you want to have an intercept term in the model, then what you have to do in the X matrix, the first column is going to be here, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, if you, so you can see here, if your first element here is 1, 1, 1, 1 here like this. So, here can be here beta 0 or beta, beta 1 can be taken here as a, here as an uh, uh, value or the, or the parameter which is, appearing, which is appearing in our equation. Right. So, so, uh, so uh, in regression analysis, we are going to consider two types of model, one without intercept term and one with intercept term. And the choice of the model is uh, decided only by you. You are the one who is going to take a call that how the, how the things are going to work. For example, if I say, okay, let me try to first explain you how are you going to take a call. Suppose if I say that, suppose I'm conducting an experiment in the agriculture field. Suppose I give no fertilizer, no uh, means rain, no temperature, when means uh, the usual temperature, nothing I do artificially. And even if you try to sow some seed, right, you after some time you will get here some crop. Right, but if you try to make the voltage and current to be zero, then, then what is going to be the RPM of the fan? Fan that is going to be zero. So now in this case, what will happen? Even if all the independent variables are taking the value zero, then the value of the Y is going to be zero or not. So if all the values of X1, X2, XK, they are zero and if Y also becomes zero, that means you don't need intercept term in the model. But on the other hand, if uh, by putting all the, the values of independent variable, the outcome becomes uh, zero, then you need a model with an, uh, without an intercept term. So this is how we try to take. Uh, remember one thing, there is no statistical way to, way to decide that whether this uh, intercept term has to be there, but this is only you who is going to take a call. So, so you can see here, if you are uh, writing here that X is here, N cross K matrix. So in this case, if you just go by the same traditional, so one of the values here known, so your uh, number of independent variables are going to be actually uh, say K minus one. So you have here only K minus one independent variable or the explanatory variable and, and another one is the intercept term. Right, so now, what are the uh, and then when we try to solve it, we have to make certain assumptions in the linear regression model. So we try to uh, make here. Yes, th these are some statistical assumptions, but I will try to explain you in a simple common language. So this expected value of epsilon is equal to zero means the average of the random errors in the entire population is equal to zero. So th that I already have explained you. Now, this is here the covariance matrix of this random error term. So you are simply assuming that all your random errors are independent and uh, they have got the same uh, variability. For example, uh, if you are going from your office to home, means every day you will make some, uh, some uh, changes in the values, but those values are going to be contained in, in some uh, specific interval. For example, if you say, okay, I take 30 minutes, so usually you will say that, okay, your, your time is going to be something like uh, between 25, uh, 25 minutes to, uh, say here, 30, 35 minutes. So that is going to give you an idea about the variation. So you are simply trying to say here that, uh, uh, that uh, your, uh, this uh, uh, you this uh, time uh, time uh, taking what uh, so worry the difference in the actual time taken and uh, the the thought time taking what we assume that is going to be a random variable but its value is going to be between say 25 minutes and 35 minutes so this is going to indicate the uh, indicate the the value of the variance so you are trying to say here 
in a very simple way that the variability in this uh, uh, in the observations that is going to be the same in all the data values. And similarly, after this, I try to give take here one more uh, constraint here that the rank of the matrix X. This is actually uh, the uh, uh, this is uh, actually the same as the number of independent variable. Actually, this assumption you will see that later on when we are trying to find out the value of uh, beta one, beta two, beta k, then actually uh, you need to assume that the matrix of X has got a full column rank, and that is why you you need this assumption here, right? Similarly, if you try to take here X is a non stochastic matrix, then uh, non non stochastic mean, means it is only here non random. Non random here means that you are simply trying to say that whenever you are trying to uh, conduct an experiment, the values of the variable that you are going to assume in order to conduct uh, the experiment, they are going to be the fixed value. Right, and then you are assuming that epsilon will follow our uh, normal zeros sigma square uh, distribution that is needed because when you are trying to uh, conduct uh, the test of hypothesis or confidence interval estimation, at that time you will need it. Yeah, so that is the, these are the basic assumption, yeah means you can always ask that uh, that what will happen if these assumptions are uh, not uh, satisfied and and they are violated so yes that is happening and then um, in statistics in this regression analysis we are trying to teach these uh, different uh, values by that if they, there is a violation in such assumption what exactly are you going to do but definitely here in this uh, lecture i don't have i may not have this opportunity to to explain you each and everything Right. So now once you have collected the observation, you have formulated your model, your next job is that how to find out the value of the parameter beta and here this sigma square. If you try to see here, sigma square is the variability of the random error and, and as such you will always like to know that okay, that, uh, that whenever you are trying to do something, that how much is the variability in your value. For example, if you say okay, I will uh, reach in say five minutes time. So you will say reach in say three minutes time or say seven minutes time. So I I need to know here that uh, that how much variability are you really going to make. So that is why we need here this uh, concept of here sigma square for this for this variability. Right. So when you are trying to uh, trying to consider this modeling, then then you have here 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 two objectives. Right. So in this case, uh, uh, means uh, what will really happen uh, that based on the data set what you have collected, you have to find out the value of the regression coefficient and the variance. So now the question is, how are you going to do it? So now the values of beta 1, beta 2, beta k and the value of sigma square has to have to be estimated on the basis of given sample of data. And in order to know these values, then the question is how to know these values. We have a statistical techniques. There are different methodologies like as principle of least squares, method of maximum likelihood, etc. And they will give us a <coughs> and uh, they will try to get the give us the, the, the numerical values. It is equivalent to saying that using the values of X and Y, you are going to find out the values of M and C in your uh, linear equation Y equal to MX plus C. And you can uh, recall here that, that in your class 10 also when you study the coordinate geometry, you have got the uh, uh, you have got the formula to how to find out the value of M that was say Y2 minus Y1 upon X2 minus X1, where X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 are the two sets of observations. So similarly, we also have here uh, different methodologies and one of the popular methodology is the principle of ordinary least square. And if you try to use this principle, you will get here the value of beta vector here like has here like this which I'm trying to indicate here as a B. So you can see here, this is depending on the value of X and here Y. So the value of X is known to us, the value of Y vector is known to us. So now you can do this simple computation and you will know the value of here B. The fact is this, you are not going to do any computation yourself because our software is going to 
to give you all these values. But the most important part is that when R is going to give you these values, you must be in a condition to understand that how these values have been obtained and what is their interpretation. So similarly, if you want to obtain the value of here sigma square, you have to use this function, right? So y here is known, x here is known, v here is known from here, and then the similar quantity, and then one upon here, n minus k, l is the number of observation, and k is the number of independent variables. So now you can also, done, uh, now given the, the data on x and y, I believe that you can compute this b and here, uh, and here sigma square hat. So why? Uh, so just to give you a fair idea that what is this here least square estimation. So what we do here, for example, if I try to take here only one variable, then I try to plot here the pair observation between x and y here on this two x and y axis. And if you try to see here, you uh, the, by this circle, I am trying to assume that this is the data what you are going to get after the experimentation. And if you try to see here, this is the data, so you can assume that here that there is a hypothetical line which is uh, passing through with the maximum number of points and which and, and in which this uh, vertical error, error or this uh, means vertical error in the upper and lower direction of the line that is going to be minimum. So we try to find out the value of beta and the sigma square in such a way. For example, in this case, I'm trying to take only two parameters, beta zero and beta one. I try to find out the, the, the values of beta zero and beta one in such a way, such that this random error is minimum. Now, this is, what is this random error? This, suppose you have obtained this line then you you expect that, uh, that that the point which was which was lying here in the space now that is expected to lie uh, lie on this line because now you know the the equation of the line right so so now the equation here is how are you going to find out this beta 0, beta 1 or equivalent to beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta k minus 1 or equivalently the beta vector. So now you have obtained the value of, so if you try to see here, you have this model y equal to x beta plus epsilon. And when you are trying to minimize this random error, the minimum value of the random error is going to be 0. So you have minimized the random error and then you can obtain, you have obtained the value of beta and then you have obtained the value of here, sigma square also, number of observation n that is known, number of independent variable k that is also known to us. So you can compute uh, this b and sigma square hat as the value of beta and sigma square respectively. So now once, and then yeah, you can see here, that when you are trying to use this estimator here, b is equal to x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y, then you are trying to find out here the inverse. And those who are comfortable in mathematics and matrix theory, they know the unique inverse of this matrix x transpose x can be found only when the rank of x is equal to is a full column rank or, or rank of x is equal to here k. So that was the reason that we had to assume, we had to make this assumption. Right, okay, so now once you have obtained the value of your B, then the, of the B, 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 uh, actually, sorry, once you have obtained the value of beta, then obviously this beta has been obtained in such a way such that the random error is minimum. And when the random error is minimum, the this value is zero, so you can find out the model like this y equal to bx so b is the value of beta which is obtained on the basis of given sample of data y and x are known so now this is called here as a fitted model and now if you try to take any say this particular value of here x and then try to find out the value of here y then this is the fitted value or the forecasted value so what will happen for example if you have uh, have studied this uh, suppose you tell your student that okay, if you are studying uh, say 20 hours in a week, you are submitting five assignment, etc. Then you are going to get suppose 80 marks. Now uh, uh, you have to just uh, hold on. Right, there's an important call for me. Just hold on.
the extreme risk for you because there is some crisis at my institute and yeah, I have to solve that thing also. So anyway, so if you try to see here that once you are going to uh, Right. Once you are trying to get here, this type of equation here, here y equal to bx, b and b is going to be some numerical value and then this model is known. And uh, suppose if you have uh, asked your student to, to uh, that uh, if you study 20 hours in a week, you, you submit three assignments, you play for 14 hours in a uh, week, etc., then you will get around 70 marks. And suppose the student gets uh, uh, gets here the this 80 marks. So this 70 marks is something like this you are going to give from the model which you have obtained inside your brain and y is the value which he is actually opt uh, obtaining. Right, and if you try to see the difference between the two, this is like this y minus y hat. So y hat is the value of here uh, y for a given value of here x and y is the value which is opt, uh, which is observed from there. Right, so when I when I'm trying to find out the difference between the two, this is called here as a residual. So now you can uh, imagine that if this residual is equal to ideally equal to zero, then the model is going to be the best fitted model. So we uh, so then we also try to analyze the value of the residuals after we get the model. Well, uh, uh, one thing I want to assure you that all these values you don't have to compute yourself. They will be computed in the R software. But the more important part is this in the uh, in the outcome of the R software. You have to understand that what are these values which are going to be there. Right, so if you try to take here the same example which I took earlier, then uh, now I will try to show you here that uh, how are you going to get these values in the R software. So in the R software, uh, this LM is the command which is used. So this is actually linear models. Right, so this linear models in, and then inside the this parenthesis, you have to give the formula, then data, etc. There are many things, but I'm going to take here a very simple command over here to explain it. Right, so what I try to do here means I believe that uh, you know this uh, R software. So I try to make this uh, this uh, data on X1, X2, X3 and Y. I try to input here as a data vector, like as a, just using the command here, hit actually C. Right. <clears throat> and then so you can see here, this is here X1, X2, X3 and this is here Y. And this is how the data will look like. Right. And if you try to uh, plot this data, you see one thing you have to keep in mind that you are, you are assuming that there is a linear relationship between X1, X2, X3 and Y. But it is very difficult to examine uh, that whether the relationship is linear or not. So what we try to do, we try to take the individual variables X1, X2 and X3 and then we try to plot with respect to y for each of the variables. So this is actually the matrix plot. So you can see here, this is here y, this is here x1, this is here x2, and uh, this is here x3. And the same thing is happening here also on the x-axis, y, x1, x2, and here x3. So if you try to see here, if you're trying to uh, look at here this thing, so this is a, uh, a scatter diagram between here y and here x1, right? So this is, you can see here, this is a nearly a linear trend. Yeah, 100% observations are not going to lie on the, scatter, on the straight line, but they are very close to a line like uh, this one. Similarly, you can uh, observe such a phenomena for y and x2, y and x3 also. And you can you can assume that if the if the individual relationships are linear, then their joint relationships are also going to be linear. That is one way. Otherwise, uh, it is not an easy job to ascertain whether the joint relationship is linear or not, because actually that is going to be a, a four dimension picture actually. Right, so that is a big challenge when we are trying to do this regression analysis. But now if you want to know the value of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 here, you simply have to write down here LM and then Y tilde 
and then x1 x2 x3 they are actually written as here is summation x1 plus x2 plus x3 so th this is the way we try to write down the model that we want to fit on the basis of this uh, set of data x1 x2 x3 and you uh, simply write down here lm white tilde x1 plus x2 plus x3 and if you have more number of uh, See here variables you can add it here plus x4 plus x5 so that is going to indicate that uh, it has to find the model based on the data of y x1 x2 x3 or i will say it is indicating that using the data set of y and uh, x you have to compute the value of this here b and here sigma square hat right so you can see here that there are three variables here so you expect there are going to be three coefficient beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 here and this is how we get here these values so now, so now you have to understand <coughs> how you are going to understand this outcome so this is here like this intercept term here this is the value of beta 0 then similarly here uh, uh, below x1 this is here beta 1 below x2 this is here beta 2 and below x3 this is here beta 3 so now you can see here your model was beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 so now you have got the values of beta 0 beta 1 beta 3, uh, 2 beta 2 beta 3 so now you can write down here model here say y i is equal to 8.769 plus 1.997 x1 plus 3.918 x2 plus 6.106 x3 so now you can see here that you have got this model here now which is based on the data set which you have used here so now you have got a relationship between y and and here all this here x1 x2 x3 right now you can uh, means if any student comes to you and if he and and if they want to know that how many marks they are going to get what you need you simply need to know the value of x1 x2 x3 substitute it here and then you will get here an average value of the marks right and uh, if you really want to know that uh, what is the value of here this uh, here b that is the regression coefficient and we which we had obtained here like this so b is going to have here four values beta 0 beta sorry b0 b1 b2 b3 which are which are corresponding to the four parameters beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 actually and if you want to know only these values then you have to use here a command say coefficients and within parentheses you have to write down the same command which you have used here to find out the model right so now you have got here four values and then so so and then based on that you can write down the model itself and similarly if you want to know the if fitted value so what will happen here now here you have got here the model right now if you try to substitute these values of x1 x2 x3 like x1 equal to 34 x2 equal to 3 and x3 equal to 15 and then uh, in this model actually here in this model here then you will get here a value of y so now if you try to see when you uh, in the real life you are getting the value here of the marks as 180 and uh, then uh, you are uh, giving and then uh, based on this model you will also get here a value of here y right so now if you try to take the difference between the two here that will be your residual and the values of y which you are going to get on this value they are called the fitted value so if you try to uh, substitute the first set of value of x1 x2 x3 you are going to get this value 180 if you try to use the second set of values of x1 x2 x3 you will get here the values 116 right so uh, and and so uh, then these are your uh, fitted values and you who can see here this is 180 116 and in real life what you observe was that 118 and 116 but there is some difference between the two right so so these are the fitted values and earlier values were the observed values now you are trying to find out the difference between the two and this can be obtained by the command here residuals of the same command and you can see here this is here the 
20 values because you have 20 observations. So these 20 uh, fitted values were uh, obtained here. And now uh, they are automatically uh, uh, they subtracted from the from the observed values and these values of the residual are obtained here. So now you can see here if the values of these residuals are quite quite small, then you can say that your model fitting is good. But if this value of the residual is quite big, then you can say that okay the model fitting was not so good. Right, so this is how you can obtain these uh, different values in this thing. Yeah, after this, there are some essential properties which I think it will be difficult for you to uh, for you to understand. But but in a very simple way, I can assume I can explain you that the values of beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta k, what you have obtained by this formula, they are actually mm, uh, good values in the sense that they are the unbiased meter of the regression coefficient. Their covariance matrix is given by here like this sigma square x transpose x volume inverse but here this sigma square is unknown to us so if you want to know it on the value of the given set of data so that can be obtained by this expression you don't have to do do anything this r will do everything for, for you but the main thing is this you have to understand what are you really going to get and if you want to know the value of this variance covariance matrix then you have to just replace this uh, sigma square by here this sigma square hat and this is obtained here like this one right similarly it means that there are some other properties i will uh, not go to these things but uh, the but in a nutshell i can uh, share with you that uh, these properties are going to indicate that the values what you have obtained here, they are good values and based on that, the model what you have obtained here, that is a reasonably good model. Because you see, 100% accurate model is only in the hands of God. You are trying to approximate a process on the basis of given set of data by going into the reverse direction. Right. So now, based on this, there are uh, several important questions uh, which can be answered with the test of hypothesis. Right, and now my bigger question here is this, uh, that in the earlier workshop we had discussed the concept of testing of hypothesis and I believe that you remember it, but if you don't remember it, I think the better is to look into the videos of the earlier lectures and try to understand and then you you try to uh, try to look at this video once again. So now there are several questions that, uh, for example, if a student comes to you and and that student says that uh, that okay sir i have got uh, low marks in my examination because the price of the petrol petrol really increased petrol price of the petrol really increased means that then we'll ask why you will say okay because i was because the petrol was expensive so i was not coming to my college and so i got a uh, low mark do you really believe on this argument certainly not so, uh, so what I'm trying to say here that there are certain some variables which are important, which are really influencing the the the, the outcome, and whereas there are some uh, some variables which are not uh, really influencing the uh, uh, when you uh, uh, they are not uh, not influencing the the uh, they are not influencing the the outcome. For example. If you say the number of hours of study, number of assignment, number of play, they are they are they are affecting the marks. But the price of the of the of the petrol that is not really going to affect much. And so that is why these are not so important variables. So the question here is this: How you can judge all the things? That is the first thing. Second thing is this: uh, That how can you judge whether the model which you have obtained is really good or bad? So these types of questions are there which we can answer by the conduct of the test of hypothesis. So we try to test the null hypothesis beta j is equal to zero. Beta j means any regression coefficient is equal to zero uh, versus it is not equal to zero. Right, so if this is not is accepted, that means beta j is equal to zero. Now, if you try to see if, if uh, beta j is zero, then what will happen to the model? Suppose if I try to consider the same model that we have considered here, and suppose I want to conduct here a hypothesis as not beta 2 equal to 0. Suppose this hypothesis is accepted. Now, that means beta 2, the, the value of beta 2 in the population is actually here 0. So that means this model has to be revised. 
then the model has to be revised means here at the value of beta 2 you have to put 0. Now if you try to see this model will become here x1 beta 1 plus x3 beta 3 and here this will be here actually 0. So now you when this uh, beta 2 is equal to 0, beta 2 equal to 0 means this is the rate of change in the average value of y when there is a unit change in the value of x2. So you are trying to say when you try to change the value of x2 by a unit value, then the then the average value of y is affected very little. So that can be interpreted as if you are uh, that your values are not uh, that your variable is not really contributing much, and this is not a very influential variable. So this is how we try to. Uh, revise our model and we try to obtain a better model. So now how to get it done? Okay, okay. so I will simply say that this type of statistics can be can be tested using the T statistics and the standard error can can we can be obtained here like this. But anyway, I'm not going into this uh, these uh, these mathematical details. But my thing is this: How are you going to take the decision on the basis of the R software and how are you going to read it? So actually, in order to take the decision, we simply use, use a very simple rule that reject the null hypothesis against H1, the, uh, the alternative hypothesis at alpha level of significance if the p-value is less than alpha. So this software outcome is going to provide you the, the value of uh, so-called the p-value, and based on that, you can take the take the uh, the conclusion that whether you are going to uh, to accept the hypothesis or, or reject the hypothesis. So let me try to take uh, the same example of the same data set and try to show you that how you can obtain the 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 how can you use the software to obtain these values. So actually I try to use here the summary command. Summary command is a very general command. So in the earlier lecture, I had shown you that when you are trying to use it on the variable, it is trying to give you different types of values on mean, sorry, uh, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, mean for minimum and maximum summary. And similarly, if you try to use this summary command on this uh, linear model option, this LM, uh, or the same, uh, same option which you have used, uh, same command which you have used to obtain the model. Then this will give you this type of information. So let us try to uh, use this on the data that we had obtained, obtained here. So this was the command which you have used to obtain the model. Now you try to use here the summary command on it. You will get here this type of outcome. So let us try to understand how this is going to, what are these things and believe me in the next uh, 10 minutes you will understand each and everything in the outcome. So the first outcome here is residual. So it is trying to, it is trying, you have got 20 values of the residuals, and this is trying to give you the minimum value of the residual, maximum value of the residual, then first, second, and third quartiles of the residuals. This helps us in taking the decision whether our uh, distribution is symmetric or not. You know that uh, in the normal distribution, the, the median, mean, and mode, they are the, in the center, and the first quartile and third quartile, they are equally distant. So if you try to see here the difference between first quartile and median, and median and third quartile, if that difference, if this uh, the difference is nearly the same, you can assume that the distribution of the random errors is symmetric. So this is about the summary statistics and now here you have here some values here. I will try to take them one by one and I will try to how to explain you. Right. So so this is here uh, the uh, this is here uh, the 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 outcome of the screenshot which I shown you. Now let me try to take here this particular particular part of this outcome and I try to show you. So this part I already have explained you. So now I will try to take this uh, this part here. So if you try to consider here this part I have highlighted here. Actually, so if you try to see here n is equal to 20 and k is equal to here 4 and you are getting here this outcome. So now I will try to take here one outcome at a time and then I will try to understand that how I can interpret it. So if you try to see here the first column here is estimate. So estimate is the values of this is here the values of beta which are indicated by here b. So this is here it b0, this is b1, this is b2 and this is b3. Now after this, this is here is standard error. 
So standard error means whenever you are trying to compute, uh, estimate this intercept term or this uh, B1, B2, B3, they will have some variability also. So this uh, standard error is trying to show you the amount of variability that is involved in the intercept term estimation, slope parameters, beta B1, B2, B3. Right. So obviously, if the variability is high, you will you will say that the model fitting is not uh, good. But in case if the variability is low, then you are going to say that the this uh, model fitting is good. All right. Then and then this is a, a t value. T value is something like uh, that is used for the test of hypothesis when we try to test here the hypothesis H not beta j is equal to zero. So corresponding to which you have uh, means I have just told you here that this is the value of here. This is the expression for the t statistics. So this uh, t value is given over here. Right. It is here. So, so this 8.509 is the t value corresponding to the intercept term, and these three values are the are the t values corresponding to beta one, beta two, and beta three. And these values here probability is written here like this. This is these are your here p value. So now, if you try to compare these values one by one, you can obtain the test of hypothesis. I will try to show you in this uh, lectures. Uh, sorry, in these slides also now. So we want to test here h not beta j equal to zero. So this is computed by this quantity, which you don't worry. This is not for you. So, but but if I try to take here the first row of this thing. So you can see here that the t value here is 8.509 and this this is p value here is 2.507. So now uh, if you try to choose here this uh, the, the value of level of significance here as a 5%. So this is going to be 0 0.05. Right. So if you try to see here this uh, value of p there which is 2.47 into 10 power minus 7 which is 0 0.00000247 this is smaller than 0 0.05 right so th that means we have to reject the hypothesis h not beta equal to beta 0 equal to 0 at alpha level of significance so you are trying to say that this hypothesis S not beta zero equal to zero is rejected. That means the corresponding variable, which is here, the intercept term, that is an important part, which has to be there in the model, right? So this intercept term beta zero is important for us. That is what we have understood from here. Now, if you try to come to the second line, here, this T value here is 61.850. So this is the value corresponding to the null hypothesis. So H not beta one equal to zero. Against H1, beta one is not equal to zero. And the corresponding T, T value here is obtained here like this. And then here with the P value here is like this, two into 10 power of minus 16. So you can see here, this is much, much smaller than the value of level of significant alpha, which is 0 0.05. So once again, you are trying to say here that this X1 is an important variable, right? So um, this variable has to be inside the model with no issues. And then and similarly, if you try to come to the second uh, line here, so this is here the value 23.493. So this is the this is corresponding to the null uh, to the test of hypothesis for the null hypothesis H not beta two equal to zero versus H one beta two not equal to zero. So once again, the value of T statistics, if you try to do it from the basic formula, then this is also matching with this thing, and. Uh, uh, p value here is 7.90 into 10 power of minus 14, which is again smaller than alpha. So H not beta to equal to zero at 5% level of significance is rejected. That means beta two is not equal to zero. So beta two is not equal to zero. That means it is contributing in the model. That means the rate of change in the average value of Y with respect to X2 is not close to zero. That means X2 is an important variable. And this is what we try to conclude here. And similarly, if you come to the third line here, then once again, this T value is coming out to be 84.405. And then the P value here is say, 2 into 10 power of minus 16. So which is once again, much, much smaller than alpha. And it is trying to say here, that it's not beta 3 equal to 0 is rejected. That means the corresponding variable X3 is 
and important variable. So now you can see here by this uh, test of hypothesis, you have concluded that the three variables which you have taken in your uh, uh, this uh, modeling, they are important variables and you cannot ignore them. So this is how we and then yeah, in case it means I have taken here a nice model. So that is why they are getting accepted. But if this is not any of the S not is uh, not accepted, then what is sorry if the if any of the S not is accepted. So suppose it comes out to be suppose S not uh, beta three equal to zero is accepted. So this means you have to drop the model uh, sorry, drop the variable X3 from the model and you have to re uh, fit your model. So that is what I always say in real life. You cannot. Okay, can you say again? Your voice is not clear. I think so someone is asking something. Right. OK, so in in real life, what will really happen that you cannot usually obtain the model in a single shot. You have to fit a model, then you have to conduct this test of hypothesis and then you have to see that uh, uh, whether all the variables are actually good or not. And then based on that, you have to revise your model. And that is the precise reason that many times people come to me with some data and they ask me, OK, sir, I have to submit my thesis tomorrow. Please uh, give me this model. I simply say I cannot give it because it requires time. You have to understand the experiment. Then you have to understand that how the experiment was happening. And then you have to uh, first do different types of diagnostic tests. And then only you can uh, use this. Uh, you can create a model to give them the values. And it is just like as if you try to compare uh, when a doctor conducts an operation before that the doctor makes different types of tests to ensure that uh, when the doctor is doing the operation, then these parameters are in control and they don't harm the patient. They will try to check the blood sugar, blood pressure, etc. At that time, nobody says, OK, sir, OK, doctor, without uh, checking my blood pressure and other things. Uh, I think your voice is not clear. If you're asking something, then please speak again. Your voice is not clear, clear audible at all. Right. Anyway, so so this uh, this modeling is a is a process way, which is an iterative process. So you have to experiment with the data. Sometimes you have to change the transform the data also. Sometimes you try to choose a log transformation. Sometimes you try to do something else. So those types of steps are involved. Right now, now I try to give you a, a brief idea about the confidence interval. What is the what is the confidence interval? Suppose if I ask you the question that how much time you are going to take when you uh, go from your home to the office, you will say suppose say 30 minutes. It is not really going to be 30 minutes. Uh, but, but that is going to be between say 25 minutes and say 35 minutes. That makes more uh, more sense actually, and that is well understood, right? Uh, for example, uh, nowadays we get in the news that uh, okay it, uh, it, today uh, there were 40,000 cases of corona. It doesn't mean that exactly there are 40,000, but they are trying to say that okay if they say okay there are around 38 to 40,000 cases in the country today. So that will uh, make a sense that okay the the number of cases are between 38 and 40,000. So this is actually our confidence interval. So when you are trying to take a sample of data and you are trying to fit this model, essentially you are trying to get the values of beta one, b zero, b one, b two, b three. Then don't you think that if you try to take um, take another sample, these values are going to change marginally? So that is why it is a better option always to to compute the confidence interval for these values because these are the values in the. Uh, in the population which we don't know, we are trying to estimate them only on the basis of the sample. So the question here is, is how you can construct the confidence interval. Well, this is the mathematical expression here for, for computing the confidence interval, but surely I will not go into this, uh, this detail, but I will try to show you that how you can create or obtain the confidence interval for the given set of data in the case of regression analysis. 
So as you can recall here, we have just used the same example here in which we have obtained the linear regression model by using this command lm y tilde x1 plus x2 plus x3. Now, when I'm trying to obtain the confidence interval, I have to I have to give the confidence level also. Right. Sometimes you say it is a very simple thing. Uh, Sometimes you say that, OK, your friend is suppose your friend says that, OK, he will uh, uh, come in half an hour. So half an hour means 30 minutes and he will be there, say, within 29 to 31 minutes. But uh, some friends, if they say that they are coming in half an hour, so they will come, say, say after 45 minutes or so. So this is the level of confidence what you have on your friends. So similar is the concept in the confidence interval estimation also. That we try to uh, define that, OK, we want to have the confidence interval with, say, 95% probability. In very crude language, I can say that if you try to repeat the experiment 100 times, then out of this, 95 values are going to lie in this interval. That is a very crude inter uh, interpretation, I can say. To, to understand right so uh, when you are trying to find out the confidence interval here you have to use the command here conf int c o n f i n t and then you have to specify here the level of confidence say 0.95 because i am interested in the 95 percent confidence interval so in this case if you try to see here this interval for the intercept term it is like there's 6.58 to 10.95 that means there is a 95 percent probability that the intercept term is going to lie between 6.58 and 10.95. Similarly, for the beta one, you can see here that there's a 95 percent probability that the values are going to, the values of beta one are going to be uh, lie between 1.92 and 2.06. Now, if you try to see what is the your your true value of this beta one, beta two, beta three, beta three, you can see here. The beta intercept term is 8.76 and beta uh, B1 is 1.99. So if you try to see here, this uh, value of uh, beta 1 is lying in this interval and sorry, B0 and value of B, B1 is also lying in this interval. So usually the estimated value what you have obtained earlier as a point that will lie in the center of this confidence interval in this case, but usually it will lie within the, the, the confidence interval. So this will also give you uh, an idea that how are you going to estimate the parameters. And similarly here, this is here the confidence interval for B2, so beta 2. So, so you are trying to say that the value of beta 2 is going to lie between 3.5 and 4.2. And similarly for the beta 3 value is going to lie between 5.95 and 6.25. So this is how actually you obtain the confidence intervals and that will give you a better idea about the modeling also. So yes, the individual point estimate may, may vary and but you expect that, okay, uh, this will give you an idea that how much it is going to vary actually. Right, so you can see here, this is here the screenshot of the same operation. Actually, I will suggest you that you simply try to copy, uh, copy this statement and simply paste it on the R console, you will get exactly the same uh, same outcome over here right okay the last topic which comes over here that when you are trying to fit the data you always want to know whether your model is well fitted good fitted or or bad fitted how to get it done so you know when you are trying to fit here a, a linear model you are simply trying to find out the relationship between the y and the independent variable x1 x2 xk so here, for example, here in this case, you are trying to take here three variables, x1, x2, x3, and you want to find out the, the, the correlation coefficient between y and the basket of x1, x2, x3. So actually, so that can be achieved by this, uh, by, by the multiple correlation, uh, correlation coefficient actually. Right, so multiple correlation coefficient is also a sort of, sort of correlation coefficient which is like as the correlation coefficient between a variable y and a group of variable x1 x2 xk right so this is popularly known as r square or it is indicated by r square and this is actually the uh, called as coefficient of determination right so this value of of this r square or the coefficient of determination in a common language will will explain us that how good is our model whether the model is good or bad so yeah this has this is the expression that how this r square is computed so you can see here once you have the value of y and x that can be computed on the basis of 
given set of data without any problem. One very important point that when you are trying to use the value of R square, then the intercept term has to be compulsorily present in the model. How to judge the goodness of it in those models where you don't have the uh, this intercept term, this is a very, very ad hoc thing. So at least this R square is defined only when there is an intercept term in the model. Believe me, many people make this mistake that they try to fit the model without an intercept term and they try to use the value. So now the question is here that how this R square is going to reflect on the goodness of it or the model adequacy. It's very simple. The value of R square lies between 0 and 1. If R square is equal to 0, that means the model is very bad. That is the poorest fit. And if R is equal to 1, that will indicate that the model is best fitted. And if there is any value between 0 and 1, like as R is equal to 0 0.95, then it is then it explained that there is a 95% of the variation in Y, which is explained by the explanatory variable. Or in simple words, you can say that the model is nearly 95% good. Right. So similarly, if you have any other value of R square, then you yourself can decide whether your model is well fitted or not. Right. And then, uh, uh, but then R square has one issue that if you try to add some more variables in the model, even if they are not good, not relevant, the value of R square will increase. So that is going to indicate as if the model is getting better. But sometimes, if your variable variable is not good, then it is uh, then it is only a false picture. So in and uh, some uh, so in order to take uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes if there is some problem also. Uh, well, I'm not uh, discussing those problems here. This R square value can be negative. So you can think about the situation that how a square value can be negative. So in order to overcome these issues, we also have defined the so-called adjusted R square. So this adjusted R square is defined here like this. So n is the number of observation, k is the number of independent variable, and R square is the value of R square that we have obtained in the earlier expression, and it is indicated by his R bar square or say adjusted R square. So all these things, yeah, the usual thing is like ADJ R square. So all these things are available in your outcome only. You simply have to read there. So the question is now how to get it done. So I try to take here the same example that we have considered and we try to use here the summary command that you use earlier also. Then in summary command, there will be a, a value of R square and adjusted R square. But in case if you simply want to obtain only the R square or say, or say adjusted R square, then the command here is you try to use the summary over this LM. A command and then I try to write down a dollar and then r dot s q u a r e d squared and if you want to know the value of adjusted r square use the same commands then you try to use your a d j dot r dot squared and this will give you the value of only the value of r square and adjusted r square but anyway if you try to look at this outcome which you had means earlier obtained there was a column here this multiple R squared. So this is the value of your R square, which is 0.9995. So you are saying that, okay, your model is 99.9% .9 good. Well, this is a hypothetical model. In practice, it will not happen. It is very rare. If you get it, you are, you are very lucky. And the value of the adjusted R square is here, 0 0.999. So, so usually these values are not uh, very far away. They are very close. If they are far away, then you have to see there is some problem. Right. And uh, means if you want to uh, compute it by manually, you can do it. But anyway, the software is doing it for you. So you don't have to worry for these things. Right. And if you simply try to use here the uh, the command here, R square and adjusted R square, you will get here these two values without any problem. And this is here the outcome. You can see here. This is here the value of R square. And this is here the value of multiple R, uh, this adjusted R square. Right, so now I think I should just stop here. And uh, now if you have any questions, uh, you can ask. Right. So if you have any questions, uh, then you can ask actually. That is called coefficient of determination. This its range should be on zero to one only, no? So it should not come hmm. minus side, right? Yes, it should. Yeah, it is actually between zero and zero and one only. Yeah, there there is no minus one, like no, no, no. either a point. 
right 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 actually actually because what happened that when we have the problem of multi collinearity etc then and then if the collision is extremely low then sometimes this value become means negative when for example if you are using uh, if you are not using the interceptor in the model and if you try to find out the value of r square sometime it will become negative so that means if it is negative that means there is some problem in in finding out the model Yes, I agree. Because in the industry we are using, uh, if r equal to one, that's it. We are thinking that it is a perfect positive linear relation. <laughs> r is equal to minus one, then we consider as a perfect negative linear correlation. If r is zero, that means there is no relationship. No, I think your first and third statements are correct. The second statement is not correct because uh, that is different. Actually, this has been misinterpreted. If that happens with the uh, correlation coefficient, actually, if the correlation coefficient is negative, then one can say that it is a that the relationship between y and x is a, is a, in the negative direction. But uh, this cannot be obtained on the basis of r square. That is wrong. If you want to have the negative relationship, then you have to look on the sign of the regression coefficient. If the sign of the value of B is positive, that means the relationship is increasing. If, if the sign of B is negative, that means the relationship is, neg uh, is sorry. If the sign of B is positive, that means the relationship between Y and X is positive, is positive that is increasing. But in case if the sign is negative, that is indicating that the relationship between y and x is negative. That means if you try to increase the value of x, then the value of y r is going to decrease. But but it but that cannot be obtained on the basis of r square. That is for hundred percent sure. Is it varies from industry to industry? Because our company is set at if r is less than 0.5. We are considering as a little correlation. OK, and we have keeping the value r is if more than 0.8. Then we are thinking it is a very strong uh, relationship. So is, yes. it, is it vary from industry to industry, sir, or yes. any standard? Yes, yes, yes. It it varies from situation to situation. That how do you? Uh, sometimes you know, as a teacher, if you make a small mistake, if a student makes a small mistake in in the copy, we simply give him uh, zero marks. Sometimes if you, if the if some teacher will give them okay, this some marks. So this varies from industry to industry, but but definitely this is a value between zero and one. Zero is uh, indicating the minimum, and one is indicating the maximum. And uh, so, uh, depending on the type of work, what you are doing, you have to define the limit that how you can say whether the model is good or bad. So that will uh, vary from one situation to sorry, one industry or one experiment to another experiment. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your explanation. Nicely, sir. Thank yeah. you. So there is one question uh, using simple data. We are estimating regression parameters, which are population parameters. Please explain this and then why T distribution is there. And then how to use categorical independent variables. Three questions are there. So you could just say one by one. What is the first question? Uh, using simple sample data, we are estimating regression parameters, yes. which are population parameters. Ah. Please explain this. Yes, you see that is the job of statistics that we are always trying to find out the value in the population based on the sample of data. If you try to take a very simple example, recently the COVID vaccine were developed. They are valid for everybody in the country. The vaccine was developed in US, but uh, people in India are, are also using it. So that is our objective that we want to develop a vaccine which is uh, useful for everybody in this world. But we are trying to take only a small sample, and that is the job of the stat statistician to ensure that the final conclusion what are being taken, they are only for the population values, and they have a smallest Error, um, a smaller uh, standard error. And what is the second question? Next is why T distribution is there? Why T distribution? Actually, actually, that is the job of a statistician. We try to use our theoretical properties, properties, and and based on that, we try to uh, actually once once we try to use the statistical principle, then we come to know that okay, in this case, we have to use the T distribution. Okay. The next one is um, how to use categorical independent variables. 
Yes, uh, if you if you have this X1, X2, XK as a 0, 1 type or 0, 1, 2 type categorical variable, then the uh, model and the formulation is going to be the same. Only you have to be very careful when you are trying to uh, trying to do the interpretation. But uh, but this methodology is the same. Then there is another question. What are the AIC values in the regression equation? Are yes, they the R2 values? No, no, these are the AKIK information criteria because when, once you are trying to fit the model, then how are you going to judge whether the model is good or fat, good or bad? So, so, so there are different type of criteria which are used uh, to judge whether the model is good or bad. Like as R square, there is AIC, like there is BIC, and there are some other options also. So, so AIC is the AKIK information criteria, BIC is the Bayesian information criteria and uh, type of thing. So these are different measures for uh, finding out the goodness of it. And in the R software, when you are trying to do this, uh, this regression analysis, you can obtain these values without any problem. There is a separate command. Okay, that's all, sir. There are no more questions. Is anyone having question? Sir, ANOVA required or not in multiple linear regression? Is ANOVA required? Analysis, analysis of variance is, is just a test of hypothesis. Uh, actually, uh, for testing H0 beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to 0. Right, so uh, the, so so from this actually, if from the same LM model, where when you have used the summary command, uh, similarly you can use the a and OVA ANOVA model, ANOVA command, and it will give you the analysis of variance. But uh, definitely, if you want to understand all these things, possibly I need uh, two complete days to finish my lecture on simple and multiple linear regression model. So and that's I've what shared, I I've always shared. say. That is what I always say to all the workshop organizers that don't try to uh, count the number of topics which you are trying to add in your workshop. Try to take one topic, two topic, and then try to give everything. So noted for next year's FDP, I will call you first and then I will plan. I don't know. I cannot promise my condition is so bad for the next I, uh, earlier I had promised, but this, this time I will make no promise. We will have late night sessions. <laughs> <laughs> because my I, condition today was so bad uh, that uh, there is a crisis going on outside. People are waiting and then I have to simply jump and then solve it. And I had promised for this uh, lecture also. So I, so I wanted to keep my promise. But now I have I to be will, careful before. I will take one, another promise. five minutes from you on the last day <laughs> having a small validatory I, function. I can't uh, promise because believe me, <laughs> I can sh t t tell you my schedule today. I started, I Start, I got up at 7, 7 to 8.30. I worked 8.30 to 9. I got I got ready. 9 to 10.30, I was with you. Then 10.30 to 11, I was in my in my project lecture. 11, I started from home. I came to office 11.15. Till 11.15, till 2 o'clock, I was here. 2 to 2.30, I had learned. Uh, then 2.30 to 3, I had one meeting. From 3 to uh, 3 onwards, I had, I had another meeting. 3 to 4. And from 4.30, I am in your this class. Thank you so much, sir. So, so, so I can, yeah, I will try my best, but I cannot commit now. But I know you will come. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, sir. So, uh, please, for giving your valuable time. There are no more questions. If there is any question, please ask. Otherwise, sir is very busy. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank okay, you. All. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see in, uh, meet in the validatory session. I will thank try. You. <laughs> thank you so much. Sir. Yes, there is some some question. Yes, you are audible. Sir has left. Ha, sir has left. Sir, is there any question? Someone was speaking something. Ma'am, uh, yeah. for the star session, try to keep on uh, uh, two thirty to four thirty itself, because we have some schedules. Uh, right, try to do as early as possible for the star session. Thank you. So, for for uh, for test session. 
no no i am asking about third session daily we are taking third session for the 4:30 to 6:30 right no 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 i told you because sir is very busy so that is why we got this session after 4:30 otherwise the third session would be from 2:30 don't worry sir yeah yeah okay fine 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 in the thank previous you, you. Well, that we had uh huh Yeah, well, only we have some questions. Yeah, already. Sir, I have made a message the schedule in the WhatsApp group, and we will proceed according to that from tomorrow. Don't worry, sir. Okay. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Just stay back for two minutes.